I'm going to show you how we make tikka masala. It's Chris's and my favorite meal pretty much for the most part. We both really love it. I think it's actually in our both of our like top three favorite foods of all time. We absolutely love it. So I'm just going to show you how I put together the marinade and then later I'll show you how I cook it. First off, you're going to take a cup of low fat yogurt. You can use normal yogurt too. It's not really a big deal. Just make sure it is unflavored and you'll need a cup of it. And then I put mine personally in a plastic bag because I think it's the easiest way to do the marinade. Um, this is how my sister told me how she does it and I love it. It's so much better than putting it in a bowl and then having to cover it with plastic wrap and all that shenanigans. You just do this instead and it saves you time and hassle and dishes and I'm always a fan of not having to do more dishes than I need to. And then you're also going to take one tablespoon of lemon juice. Um, I juice my lemons by myself uh, by hand so just stick a tablespoon of that in and now I have some left over for next time I make it. This lemon juice will stay good for at least a week and we usually eat this once a week so it works out pretty well. I also use lemon juice in some of my other recipes fairly often so lemon juice and then here's my mix of spices. I just pre-mix them all together because it makes it easier to mix them in here but basically I just dump it all in and then just mash mix it up. The spices, I'll leave all the measurements down below. We use ginger and cinnamon, cayenne, pepper, and then ground cumin. This is like the most important one. And then pepper and some salt. Um, I like to use the pink salt, the Himalayan salt for actual eating, but for cooking, I usually just use the salt because it's so much cheaper and I use a lot of salt in cooking. So I'm just going to mix this up and then basically you just take some chicken that you chop up and put it in and then you just refrigerate it for a few hours until you're ready to cook it. Um, I'm only doing my marinade for about three hours today just because I didn't do it earlier in the day, which is totally my fault, but you can do this even overnight if that's easier for you or you can do it the morning of and then later that night. It does have better flavor when you do it like that, but I just didn't get to it, so that's fine. It will still taste delicious even with that. And I use two chicken breasts. The recipe that I use says to use three. But I found that two is plenty, and the chicken breasts that we usually buy are um, actually four come in a pack. And so we'll use two of them for this, and then two of them for either another recipe, or for this again later, or whatever. And it just works out because there are two people in this household. So mine is still frozen, which is fine because it's going to be um, cooked later. So yeah, just make sure you mix this up and then refrigerate it. And that's all there is to making the marinade. And often when I'm putting the marinade in the fridge, I just put it in a little bowl so that it doesn't spill just in case. But this is like so easy to wash that it's not really a big deal and it still saves me time and effort and a lot of room taken up in our sink. So I'm just going to pop this in the fridge and I'll cook it when Chris gets home. So I have that mess cleaned up and now I figured I'd talk to you guys. It's Wednesday today. Chris is still at work. It's about 4 p.m. And yeah, so this marinade's only going to be in for like two or three hours, which isn't a big deal. It will still taste delicious. I'm excited for it. This is my tripod. This is how I filmed for you guys today. Tripod. And then this is the only counter space we have. So that's what I did. And it worked out quite well, I think, um, as well as could be expected without clearing off my sewing table, off the kitchen table, and all stuff like that, which I don't want to do. So hmm. Chris will be home probably around... 5.40 ish, 5.50. I don't know if he's staying late at work today. Sometimes he does that. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed watching that. I can show you guys what we're cooking more often if you like. Um, just recently we had three days worth of meatballs. I didn't shut this cupboard. Um, we have three days worth of meatballs though and so we haven't really cooked in the past three days besides just doing the same thing over and over. Like, oh, let's cook the meatballs that I have left and stuff. So that's why that happened. I'm feeling a lot better than I did yesterday. I didn't really want to be on the vlog yesterday because I just felt kind of crummy and terrible and 
I ended up just realizing I need to take some time for myself and relax and not worry about stuff so that's why I went and took a bath uh, for uh, actually a while and um, it's actually a beautiful life bath. It's something that my mom used to do when I was growing up and therefore I did it when I was growing up because my mother showed me. But we call it a beautiful life bath and basically you just like stick candles around the edge of the bathtub and just like kind of soak and stuff and so you don't have any like lights on and it's really nice and super relaxing and um, I have four candles that I own in total and so I just had one on each section of the bathtub and it was really really nice <laughs> and the last time I took a beautiful life bath here I haven't taken one in years and then all of a sudden the past couple weeks I've just been like I really want to take baths I only had two candles and four is definitely much nicer and when I was younger we'd even have more than four and we'd just like put them as any little place that you could and it was really fun and it actually made it pretty bright in there so yeah I took a beautiful life bath last night and I also put like Epsom salts in the water because I figured that as long as I'm taking a bath I should like do a soak and just like kind of cleanse myself a little bit and remove any like tension and stuff and it really did help a lot and also I want to show you guys my shirt this is what I slept in last night and I decided I'd wear it today so I could show you guys and it's Harry Otter and the Alaskan scallop surprise it's glorious. This came out probably when the first book did or the second book. Like it, it's old. It's an old, old shirt and it has a great history and it's very ratty and destroyed and horrendous but I can't bring myself to get rid of it because I've had it for so long. It was my neighbor across the street who was one of my best friends growing up. It was her shirt and she's a little bit older than my next oldest sister, so it was her shirt, and then it was my sister's shirt, and then it was my shirt, and it's still my shirt. And it's faded, and I am probably going to wear it until it can no longer be worn, <laughs> until it has a bajillion holes in it. It does have a few holes in it right now, but just like along the bottom, so it's not a really big deal. Today is kind of just like a throwback day for me. I'm like wearing this old t-shirt of mine, and when I was younger, when I was like 14 and just started wearing makeup, for some reason, I just thought that the best way to do my makeup is to just stick gold eyeshadow all over my lid. Just gold, no like brown contour at all, just, just a gold eyeshadow, nothing for the crease, and then just do a little bit of like brown eyeliner and mascara. And that was it. That would be my makeup. I don't even think I wore concealer that often. And so today I'm obviously wearing concealer and stuff because I've been having a lot of acne problems and I wear lipstick too. But yeah, I just had the gold. I did stick a crease color in though. And I just thought it was really fun. I, was like, I haven't worn gold eyeshadow for a really long time. So you know, it's like, bam. Anyway, you guys probably don't care, but I really like doing makeup. So I figured I'd talk to you about it. So Chris will be home in a bit. Um, I'm going to work on skirts. I was really discouraged last night and I still am a little concerned as to what I'm going to do to fix this skirt because I just don't want to not deliver on a skirt, obviously, because that would be really bad. So I'm going to try my hardest to fix the skirt and try to work around the things that have come at me to make this skirt process absolutely horrendous. So I'm trying. So a few hours later when we actually started to cook it, um, I took a jalapeno and I usually rinse it out and scrape out the insides and then like dice it or cut it into tiny pieces and then set those aside and then take garlic. We use two cloves for this and do the same thing. And then you can set those both aside once they're minced and then you melt a couple tablespoons of butter in a pot and saute the jalapeno and garlic together in that. Stir in cumin, paprika, and salt. All the measurements for everything will be in the description below. Pour in the cream and tomato sauce. I'm just gonna let it simmer for about 20 minutes. Once it is thickened to how much you want in a separate pot, I put olive oil in and then you put the marinated chicken and saute it in there. When that's done, put the chicken into the sauce. Make sure you pull out most of the marinade because you don't want that in the sauce and let them simmer for a bit more. Usually we do tikka masala with non bread and rice, but today we decided to do tikka masala pizza. Lay the pizza dough out on the baking pan and push the edges up to make a crust. Put that in the oven for like three to five minutes just until it's a bit firmer. This makes it easier for later. And to make the chunks of chicken less big, I shredded them with a knife and then put some sauce back in and spread it over to the slightly cooked crust. Add some cheese and bake it for a few more minutes. 
and then you're done. Just let it sit for about five minutes before you serve it so that it can, everything can firm up a little bit. This is our final product, our pizza tikka masala awesomeness. We haven't tried it yet, so we're gonna try it now and it's gonna be wonderful. Okay, what do you think? Mm. Is it good? That's good. It's amazing. Okay. I love it so much. So today has been a uh, slightly uneventful but much better day than yesterday. Much better. <laughs> tikka masala was a great highlight and I personally had a really good day at work. I got a lot done. Uh, I'm pretty much completely caught up now and tomorrow it's going to be a nice relaxing very easy going day which I'm really looking forward to. The only thing is that I've been feeling sick still. Yeah, he has a runny nose. And all my, stuffy nose. Yeah, my th my throat has been hurting all day long. It's actually pretty good right now, and my headache has kind of gone away. I had a headache, had a headache for a while earlier, but it's pretty much gone away now, so that's good. Yeah, and I started to feel motivated again, and I had a good time sewing actually, and like the past few days where it's just been torture and terrible. So. Well, we we finally fin figured it out. What yeah. to do with this one skirt that's been giving you trouble. It's been giving me so much trouble and I just I was just feeling so disheartened every time I even like looked at it. I just wanted to cry and throw it away. So but I can't because I don't have like a bunch of fabric that I can buy. It's like one time fabric because it's upcycled, so there's only a little bit left of it. So yeah. I, it's working out well and I'll be able to finish it very soon tomorrow and it's pretty late now, so yeah, we're Heading I'm off to bed. Gonna go to sleep because, yeah, I'm just gonna go wash off my face and then we'll go to bed. I've been, I'm, yeah, while she's doing that, I'm gonna read a little bit more. I've read over 100 pages of the Bone Clocks today, and all throughout work, I listened to The Likeness by Tana French, like, all day long. I've gotten so far into it. I'm like, I think I'm over halfway through now. Yeah. It's like a 22-hour long audiobook, and... Last time I looked, Well, he listens I was... to it, like, on 20 times speed, so... No, this one I've actually been listening to it on 1.5 times speed. Okay. Because this narrator actually isn't a turtle when she reads, so it's 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 been pretty good. I've been really, really enjoying it a lot, and I'm really, really... <laughs> turtle, is that your turtle impression? <laughs> okay, very good turtle impression. I like it. Thank you. I'm gonna keep reading until we go to bed, but that's pretty much all. Yeah, and then I... I am on a reading update. I'm 70% of the way through City of Bones, so I should be able to finish that in the next couple days. I'm not really letting myself read until I finish the, all the skirts I need to right now, and then once I finish them, I can kind of, like, give myself a break and relax and read and stuff, so... And tell them about the reward you're going to reward yourself with when you're done with all the skirts you have to make. I get to organize bookcases. But I'm not letting myself, like, touch them until then, so I'm, yeah. like, dying to organize them all and we make have, them all pretty, so. We have stacks of books just waiting to be organized somewhere, and plus all of the star shelves just need to be completely reorganized in general, so. Yeah, so I'm super excited to reorganize all of them, and that would be my treat to myself is, yeah. But I'm not, like, it's one of those things I'm, like, forcing myself not to do right now, so that, like, I work on skirts, I'm like, I'm not allowed to organize so we'll probably both sit here and read for a little bit before we fall asleep. Yeah, because we, we've been having a little bit of trouble falling asleep. And I think reading might help both of us, kind of. Yeah, why? <laughs> this is my Jedi eye-closing trick. <laughs> anyway. Okay, and on that note, we'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.